So if we just jump right into it, folks, uh, by introductions, uh, I'm Tom Brennan. Uh, I was involved with the OWASP Foundation uh, for many, many years, served on the board of directors for 10 years, uh, and also helped stand up the New York City OWASP chapter. Um, Sam? Yeah, and uh, I'm Sam. I'm OWASP London chapter leader. So I'm an application security consultant uh, working for the financial services sector in the city of London. Excellent. So today's uh, presentation uh, is to give a little bit of history as well as some uh, suggestions for the future uh, for OWASH chapters. Uh, many of you that are on the session or watching the recording uh, might be interested in either starting an OWASH chapter or maybe even restarting an OWASH chapter. Um, and we're going to provide some tips and tricks that might be helpful for you in, in, in doing exactly that. So let's get started. So in our community, you know, we are mostly comprised of technical resources, technical people that are really good at what they do. Uh, and of course, we have a discipline of working with you know, zeros and ones or three tier architectures and application security. And that's a great thing. Uh, and that's certainly core to the many of the technical resources that are associated with, with OWASP. Uh, but this is different than running a chapter. Many of you are also familiar with building computers, working on technology and going ahead and setting up a standard spaced environment so you can go ahead and run your favorite applications. And again, uh, very different from running a chapter. And then there's also folks that like to follow plans and be really you know, beyond step here with being able to build or architect something, whether that be a house or, or something else. But just like a chapter, it's very useful to have sort of guidelines and understand sort of how that chapter could be built. And of course, there's always room for customizations and modifications. But again, without having sort of clear understanding as to uh, what the policies are, what the processes are, how to work things within the, uh, the chapter guidelines, it can be you know, a little uh, lonely. Uh, and more importantly, uh, you might be able to get some scale uh, if you look at some of the resources that we're going to talk about. So from my experience, as mentioned, um, with the OWASP New York City chapter, um, again, large metropolitan region, um, and my experience there was probably different than other, other cities or other countries. Uh, but ideally, uh, it was really about one thing, bringing together like-minded people and trying to understand sort of how we can collaborate for the common good, which was focused around the OWASP Foundation's mission and goals. In New York, um, like also New Jersey, because they are very close, and we did have a hybrid chapter, which was a New York, New Jersey chapter, um, we would basically organize meetings with like-minded people. And what was important, just like a, 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 an organization structure, is knowing sort of uh, which people had what roles. So in our chapter, what was very, very useful at the time was making sure you had a number of individuals that would share in the passion, be able to share in the spotlight or share in the work and be able to, you know, be able to pass the torch as needed. Because again, running a chapter is uh, exhaustive. Uh, it takes a lot of time uh, and certainly could be uh, very rewarding uh, personally by networking and meeting people as well as potentially advancing your tactical knowledge. But again, to be clear, uh, we think it's very important to make sure you have multiple uh, people in the chapter that share a common bond and a common understanding. So one of the things that I think that's important uh, on the historical side is to understand sort of what's changed. Uh, and, and more importantly, as to how your chapter uh, can easily utilize the policies, operational processes that have been defined, and also introducing some of the great work that Sam's been doing at the OWASH chapter side. So with that, Sam, uh, maybe what we should do is really just re reinforce some of the conversation here and then highlight some of the great things you guys have done uh, at the London chapter. So let's go back to the mission of OWASP, right? The mission of the organization is still very much the same as it's been from its initial founding as a 501c3 not-for-profit, which is to help the organization and help the community understand software and software security. Um, this is not a business association. This is not a member-serving organization. This is a not-for-profit 501c3, which is a little bit different to, to certain service and help the community at large. So, you know, without borders and without agendas, you know, we're focused on the mission of software security. Um, the projects that OWASP is involved in has grown in, you know, quite quickly over the years. Uh, but at this point, Sam, how many projects do you think OWASP actually has on its, on its, on its, uh, on its list these days? 
I think it's uh, around 300, but that number is constantly growing every day because every day I'm seeing more and more projects that I've never seen before, uh, which is great. And you know, with the current technologies, there are new projects uh, appearing, uh, and new uh, standards projects, which is great. So things like um, uh, cloud native security standards, which is a re recent one, container security standards, um, uh, Internet of Things uh, related uh, standards in top 10. So uh, I think uh, we're doing quite good in catching up with all the latest technology out there. And uh, because everything's open source, um, it, we're open to collaboration from everyone. Absolutely. So just thinking about that for a moment, just take a pause. If you had a chapter anywhere in the world and you wanted to bring together like-minded people and you wanted to have topics to talk about, well, right away, you already have about 300 topics to discuss, right? These are existing projects in various stages of their incubation um, or various stages of their evolution, excuse me. Uh, but being able to pick one and be able to collaborate with people in the room about what does this project do? Uh, is a conversation. It is a discussion. And then perhaps there's people in the room that want to demonstrate it or they wanted to research it prior to the meeting and they want to talk about it. Or better yet, maybe you reach out to the project leader and you ask them if they wouldn't mind either traveling virtually or traveling physically to speak to your group. Um, so there's great opportunities here. And the content is really what I'm getting at is the content of OWASP is very rich and there's lots of great information available to you. So when you're looking for content and saying, oh, it's difficult to get speakers, I would always say, well, turn back to the foundation's uh, core uh, uh, purpose of being, which is trying to raise visibility for software security. And those products are a great place to start in addition to other uh, you know, conversational items that you guys want to you know, consider doing. Um, and this plays really well into recruiting attendees. Um, if you do a presentation around OWASP Foundation and, and, you sp and you speak to things like the OWASP Top 10, which is once again very popular with the new release for 2021, well, you're going to draw a, a large number of individuals that want to listen and learn. Um, so again, recruiting attendees isn't really difficult, I don't think, for people that are demographically interested in software security. And if you stay very focused on software security, um, then everyone will always be in a common space. They'll always know sort of what to expect at an OWASP meeting. They're not going to show up at an OWASP meeting and hear about how to fix a car, unless maybe you're hacking the CAN bus, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, if we're looking at... Um, you know, what the meeting's purpose is and what the focus points are, uh, recruiting attendees are always going to be you know, demographically interesting and tied to everyone from CIOs and CISOs and developers and managers and directors. You have a very wide, uh, uh, wide opportunity to talk to different types of people. And with that, talks about membership. So keep in mind that organizations like the OWAS Foundation are very important to not only themselves, but also to the people that we serve at a larger scale. So in order to have a voice, in order to help the organization shape its direction, in order to either be for or against certain aspects of you know, where the organization may or may not want to go in the future, it does go back to democracy. It does go back to a democratic vote. It does go back to members casting a vote for leaders, casting a vote for different actions. And we always encourage chapter members uh, to become part of the foundation's membership. And because you're a part of the local chapter, it's kind of like being able to go anywhere in the world and, and show your card at the door and be welcomed with open arms to a place where you might be traveling to. It's a great experience, actually, uh, to go to any chapter around the world when you see they have a meeting because they're all publicly advertised, be able to show up and say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm in here today from New York, or I'm here from Kansas, or I'm here from, you know, Taiwan, wherever, wherever you happen to be in the world. It's a great opportunity to uh, sort of make those connections, and they're very valuable. Exactly. I would like to yeah, add uh, here, Tom, uh, about the introductory uh, talk. So if you are a, uh, an OWASP chapter leader, or if you're thinking of starting a chapter, as Tom just said, it is very important to actually do that introduction to your attendees where you will tell about what is OWASP, how big is OWASP, what is our mission, our purpose. Uh, but most importantly, you also need to tell them about the value of membership. And uh, that is what um, I think the uh, very, very important part of uh, an OWASP uh, chapter meeting. 100%, 100%. And we're going to see a lot of that as Sam steps through some of the great accomplishments they've accomplished in London. It's a good model. Um, but again, keep in mind as you run your chapter, um, the value to the participants. Um, it's one thing to bring together um, individuals for a particular technical topic or a, what I would call a marketing conversation around a typical um, 
widget or service. That's a little bit different than an OWASP sort of get together or a community meeting. Um, getting like-minded people to just socialize and come together and share tips and knowledge and and they might you know might be some opportunities uh, to, for people that are looking to get hired or there might be some job situations or there might be some technical mentoring going on uh, or people want to break into the industry and want to learn you know who who they can be connected to. There's a lot of dynamics that happen at a chapter. So think about that in context of perhaps, again, perhaps, perhaps you look at the guidance that we're going to go over and you sort of model your chapter to that guidance, such as having your meetings consistently, meaning you may want to consider having your meetings monthly or quarterly, you know, whatever the minimum requirements are, of course, to check the box. But more importantly, if you're having a consistent meetup or a consistent meeting, then people know that perhaps the third Wednesday of the month, there's a meeting happening at a particular location. Now, if you move the meetings location to location, that may be very useful for moving things around, let's say, a metropolitan city like we did in New York. Or if you always have it at the same location or the same pub or the same location, people, can, again, can be consistent and know that on a particular date, particular time of the month, they're going to be able to go there. Adding the virtual component, you know, we're going to hear about that as well. Uh, but being able to now be very fluid and have it be normal. Uh, it's great for the technology chapters, right? We can do an event where that we have a physical presence and then be able to potentially live stream it or no physical presence at all. And basically live stream content from, you know, from the, um, from the chapter side, which again, we're going to hear about. Keep in mind your, your members. Keep on your members to involve them in your chapter. If they are individuals that are life members, or they you know they donated uh, fifty dollars to become a member of the foundation, that's fantastic. But make sure that's engaging. Make sure you recognize those people. Make sure that they if you if you give out sticky badges or you're doing something to identify people by name, perhaps you want to highlight those individuals. Perhaps you want to ask them why they're you know why they feel it's valuable to be a member. Uh, and in many cases, it's because the knowledge that they are learning from the foundations and, and its members, and it's very useful to be part of the club, if you will. Um, and also, membership does have some values that we'll talk about shortly. And then lastly, for me, uh, sponsorships. Um, no, unfortunately, nothing happens um, in, in the real world uh, without you know, sponsorship in some cases, right? You can't get the pizza and beer if you can't find someone to pay for it makes sense. So it's always important to um, understand sort of where that line is in the sand uh, and having an organization understand that we're going to help bring together a bunch of people that are technical and we'd like to leverage or utilize your your space for that, your office space in some cases. And then the, the, the sponsor may say, well, that's great. We're looking to hire a bunch of people. So it's a win-win, right? You're going to bring a bunch of people. We're going to be here. Maybe we help kick off the meeting as the sponsor and say hi to everybody. Um, you know, that that's very useful. Um, and again, be very careful with sponsorships, right? Sponsorships need to be sort of understood as to what the mutual value is. Uh, and of course, we're going to talk a little bit about how the money flows as well with uh, some of the new policies and procedures that are in place. But make sure you have fun with it. Um, organizations, you know, want to support a, a community, a mission, a charity. They want to be part of that. Uh, and I think OWASP Foundation gives you a great place uh, to start with those items. So Sam, want to tell us about London? Yes, uh, so uh, OWASP London chapter is actually uh, quite an old one. Um, it started in 2004. Uh, currently, we are on the Meetup group. We have over 1,000 members, uh, but our meetings are currently attended, well, in pre-pandemic world, um, by uh, anything between 100 and 300 people. And that actually became a bit of a problem because it is relatively easy to find a venue in London with a conference room uh, big enough for 100 people with, with a screen um, and microphones. But uh, uh, as we started growing and uh, more and more people started attending and we realized that when we started uh, announcing an event for let's say for 100 attendees, all the tickets were disappearing within a matter of hours, which was unbelievable. And uh, um, there was a, um, uh, a meeting uh, venue space at one of the sponsors at Expedia, I think, and it was called The Ship. And uh, because the event was completely booked out and myself and my chapter colleague, Sheriff Mansu, we looked at each other and said, okay, we're gonna need a bigger ship because this one is too small now. <laughs> okay, so a little bit about the OWASP London chapter. It's quite interesting, Tom, if you can um, um, move on uh, to the next slide to uh, uh, show us the interesting email, which was actually uh, on our mailing list um, 
from Dan Cuthbert back in 2004. This is actually the, the uh, date of birth of OWASP London, uh, where they, um, they all met in a pub. So there's Dan Cuthbert presented today as well, one of the founding fathers of OWASP as well, Dennis Cruz and uh, Dafis Sugdagat, who is um, a, um, known as a creator of the Burp Scanner, for example. There are a lot of very interesting people who just got together in the pub and that's where OWASP uh, London uh, meetups were. And I joined them only in 2008 as an attendee and I was just attending, uh, became a member and um, I, found that OWASP is uh, amazing and it has a tremendous value for me. And um, in 2015, um, uh, we were asked, uh, myself and Sharif, to um, uh, step in and become uh, chapter leaders because the previous leadership actually uh, moved to a different country. So uh, one of the first challenges that, that we had was where do we find the speakers? So. Tom, if you move to the next slide, I'll find you the first speaker uh, that we discovered, who is our local guy in the UK, but he was not from London. He was from um, north of the UK. And that's Scott Helm, of course, the um, one of the famous guys in application security. He actually traveled down uh, to London to present his talk on um, uh, content ejection, cross-site scripting, and uh, HSTS, uh, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. We had lots and lots of people uh, attending this talk. And um, again, one of the interesting things was about, for example, sponsoring travel, because uh, sometimes if you don't have speakers locally, you can actually um, um, invite speak, uh, good speakers, you know, some famous speakers to come and uh, present. And again, uh, rather than, you know, expensing it, because of course the travel requires uh, money, um, we're actually quite lucky because Expedia was actually sponsoring this and they provided a, a hotel voucher and a travel voucher for the speaker to travel. So again, we didn't need to spend any of our um, uh, own money. So this was great. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, Tom, I think, let me see if I can actually move on to the next slide myself. If not, I will ask you to move to the next one. I think it's best if you move the slides. Um, uh, you talked about hacking cars and we did have a fantastic talk about hacking cars and also hacking IoT devices and toys and uh, uh, which was a, uh, quite a scary talk and uh, also talks about um, uh, security of drones and we were demonstrated um, how to actually uh, hack a drone while it is in the middle of its flight and uh, it was amazing. So uh, I think th this has attracted so many attendees to our events, it's just unbelievable. We also managed to locate and invite uh, great, uh, great speakers presenting talks on um, ransomware, for example. Um, and I'm gonna talk about where to find speakers. If you're struggling to find speakers, because of course the talks is one of the core things that uh, we do at OWASP chapter. But another thing that we do is training and that is capture the flag events. And what is great about Capture the Flag uh, um, tournaments is, again, you uh, we just partner up with a uh, platform provider. There are several um, uh, secure coding training providers and Capture the Flag uh, platform providers who are happily providing their platforms for free to OWASP and OWASP members. And we ran several events which were really, really, really successful. And um, we had sponsors donating prizes that you can see there in the corner that we had uh, headphones, we had drones. Uh, I think somebody even donated a bottle of whiskey, uh, T-shirts, um, Alexa speakers, you name it. There's uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely great event. And um, the actual, um, atmosphere at, at these events is, is, is so good. And what was also good for us as an OWASP chapter, usually when we have our regular events with talks, there is one type of audience coming to these events. When we announced that we're doing a capture the flag tournament for developers, out of the blue, there were hundreds of people coming to these events. I've never seen about because usually you get your regulars, right? So you would see the same people coming over and over again. And then there were developers and these are people who never turned up at any previous events. And um, again, we ran our introductory slide deck at the beginning. So people learned about OWASP, what it is about 
and how to join a wasp and this is how we managed to grow our chapter and um we had absolutely amazing feedback so tom if you move to the next slide you will see some of the great feedback that we received yeah. um and uh, people basically saying on twitter oh my god this is such a great um event and we had uh people uh, traveling from uh, other countries actually to attend capture the flag events um and uh, winning drones, which is great. And, th and think about this too, right? As chapter leaders, right? There's no reason why we can't do chapter to chapter conversations or chapter to chapter competitions. So that think about a, as a capture of the flag, let's say in your region of the world, um, and of course, based on time zone, perhaps you wanna run multiple CTFs from multiple locations. And if that's possible, you can actually have a, a chapter versus chapter sort of approach. So you can kind of make it fun, right? That's what these organizations and these chapters are supposed to be. Um, so consider that as you as you look at ways to put together fun and the interesting events but as sam said a lot of great feedback came from his events and um and, and sam if you if you like we can um, continue please yeah sure and um yeah i think um about the chapter to chapter we actually did run such an event last year it was actually only well we actually ran it for two years. So uh, we had it with OWAS Bristol chapter once, and then we had the UK wide tournament last year in the midst of the pandemic. This was all virtual, all done on Zoom, uh, like we're speaking to, uh, to you right now. And uh, it was very, very successful. So it works uh, across boundaries and there were people joining and yeah, then they received uh, real prizes um, sent to them by uh, sponsors uh, by regular post, which was great. And the things that we discovered how to do the membership uh, drive, right? So what we tell people is first of all, that the membership fee is not uh, an entry to the club and without this fee, you, you are not a member of the club. No, You're, you are a member, everyone is welcome to attend OWAS. But the reason why you would want to become a member, first of all, is because that your membership fee is a donation. So it's not like $50 per year, it's your donation, which actually helps the foundation, its projects and the chapters and actually helps everyone to advance the mission because we are a nonprofit foundation. And another important thing is the right to vote because once you become a, a member and once you start attending all the events, you start realizing, okay, these are the things which are happening in OWASP. Um, maybe we want to change the direction to go to this uh, shiny new thing, I don't know, whatever it is, cloud, internet of things, uh, industrial uh, control systems. Um, now we have self-driving cars, right? And we say, oh, maybe we don't have enough direction, but if you become a member, you can vote and you can vote for um, the board members who uh, will actually deliver the mission and you can become um, you, you can become a board member yourself and be elected as well. And another great advantage is that you get discounts to many international cybersecurity events if you're an OWASP member and br brand new benefits of being a member that you get access to application security training platforms. Um, and if you pay 50 US dollars per year as a uh, member or you know, $20 uh, dollar, uh, fee is for a student, uh, then you get access to exclusive training courses, which otherwise you'd have to pay thousands of dollars for. And then I think this is absolutely amazing value. Um, and of course, uh, another important thing is that you get your vanityowasp.org email address. And uh, it's not just to say, oh, I'm a member of OWASP, but also it gives you access to unlimited Google Workspace and, and uh, um, uh, unlimited um, cloud storage as well. And that's the space where you can store the presentation. That's where I store all my presentations and recordings of all the, <laughs> all the events. And, um, you know, um, another very important thing for the chapters, how to grow it is publicize it. If people don't know you exist, how are they going to attend it, right? So this is what we do. We show to people how can they follow us. Um, of course, mailing list is one of the original social media and it still exists. And a lot of people prefer to get an email rather than get on uh, social media networks. Uh, but we uh, do provide them with the um, uh, mailing list, uh, Twitter, which is very important, I think, for any information security professional, Facebook, uh, which also brings us uh, a lot of new audience. Uh, of course, we have uh, OWASP Slack and a lot of people, especially especially developers, right, who are on Slack the whole day. They actually quite like Slack. Um, of course, on Meetup, but also on LinkedIn to attract professionals who are networking on LinkedIn. But a very important social media, of course, is YouTube and having your own YouTube channel where you can publish the recordings of the events. And um, 
uh, also do the live streaming as we discovered live streaming has been absolutely uh, crucial in uh, getting uh, more members, more attendees and growing our chapter. And one of the interesting things about uh, live streaming, Tom, if you move to the next slide is um, it is not that difficult to actually set this up. So all you need to have is actually a selfie stick Right, which I showed a little photo there, uh, and you, uh, your mobile phone, that's it. And you can see that one of the photos here, I was actually using my selfie stick with my phone to live stream um, one of the events. Um, and it is very, very simple. You And everyone has a phone in their pocket, and you, all you need to do is just connect to Wi Fi and start streaming. Um, and uh, later on, we actually uh, got a video camera for recording and get a, a higher quality videos as well. But I can assure you, you can watch a lot of the uh, live stream uh, recordings on uh, West London YouTube channel. It's still a perfectly acceptable quality. And it's uh, absolutely amazing because when you're live streaming, one of the advantages is you attract bigger audience from all over the world because people on YouTube are gonna discover it, discover your live stream. And another great advantage of live streaming is that people from other parts of the world of people watching your talk remotely, your event remotely, they can ask questions, they can participate in Q&A. That's why live streaming is so important, not just uploading the recordings of the events. And of course, another important thing is how do you find sponsors? So we're, uh, uh, finding sponsors was actually not that difficult in London because we're blessed. We have got big companies and they're interested. As Tom said, they uh, were very happy to invite us. So we, you can see on the first photograph, um, Facebook London headquarters. And on the second one, it's a Microsoft Reactor London space, which is actually specifically being created for meetups, for for uh, technology meetups. And um, these companies were more than happy to uh, host the events and also uh, to um, pay for catering for pizza and beer. Uh, and uh, at the beginning, uh, they just say, well, hi, we're this company. And uh, yes, we're hiring. Uh, we would like to welcome um, all the OWASP attendees. You can see what our offices look like. And if you'd like to work here, just come and talk to us after the event. So it uh, works both ways and, uh, something, and, beneficial. and something to add to that for for venues right venues are always a very important part of where you get uh spaces for um in new jersey uh in the united states we also took leverage across the country with also other venues so if you have any members in your community or in your in your chapter that happen to be veterans uh maybe you can consider using the american legion or the or the veterans of foreign war uh, or a public library um, there's different things you can do in structure if you're looking for space that is either zero or low cost and in many cases uh, one of the sponsors will be happy to sort of help that so exactly. it's a, it's a win-win I totally agree. And if you move on to the, my next slide, Tom, you will see that reaching out to universities is very important because first of all, you will get students who are currently studying either computer science or if they're studying um, cybersecurity and we're actually quite successful in promoting OWAS to them, but also it allows us to get venues because university is another sort of free venue uh, event. And basically once we managed to grow our chapter to a size that we said, okay, now we're ready to host a big global application security in Europe and we're actually blessed that in 2018, we hosted a, uh, an application security Europe conference and we had hundreds and hundreds of attendees from all over the world. And it was amazing seeing uh, OWASP logo and OWASP flag that your words open web application security flying right next to the uh, iconic Westminster Abbey uh, in London. So um, Tom, that is actually photographs on the next slide. If you move on to the next slide, people will be able to see it. And of course, when we, you organize events, you have to remember that OWASP is all about community and community cannot survive without volunteers. So I'd like to say a huge thank you and big shout out to all our volunteers who are supporting not uh, OWASP London, not just for OWASP events, but also for outreach events because we've done events uh, like besides uh, London, we have done uh, Black Hat Europe as well. And there are lots of lots of people who are there to come and support because once people start coming to the events and enjoying them, they will be able to uh, offer their help. And of course, another very important thing is on the next slide, Tom, is um, the after party. What we discovered going to the pub and networking with the people after the event, after the talks is just as important because that is the opportunity for people to actually talk to each other because during the event, they just sat and they're watching the talk. 
uh, the after party is very, very, very important. And uh, yeah, just a couple of resources which are available as well for the chapter leaders. There's a leaders meeting at the global application security uh, events. And also uh, OWAS chapter committee has a page uh, which you can discover on OWAS.org, which lists lots and lots of resources for chapters. So if you're looking where to find your banners, your stickers, the, the introductory presentations, videos, um, uh, how to find sponsors, how to find speakers, right. uh, t-shirts, and even how to run virtual events like this one, you will find it all on that page. So I think we're out of time, Sam. Yes. Um, yep. But thank you guys. Thank and you we'll so jump much, in, Sam. We'll jump into Slack.